and that's a beautiful name. Yeah, I, I love it. Do you love it? Yeah, yeah I think it's, I, it's, it sounds very magical. Mm -hmm. um, it, means, it means sea maiden. Sea maiden. No. Sea oh, that's maidens. beautiful. I was about to ask you, what does it mean? About okay. the name, yeah? <laughs> no, no, good, good, good. That's, uh, <laughs> but does this have any sea significance maiden. with, um, you know, is it relevant in any way to the islands of Numenor or is, is there any significance as to how we, that's a part of how you created the character? Yes, um, Numenor is a very nautical society and so it's very apt that she's named after the sea. Um, Isildur means servant of the moon and Anarion, the middle child, uh, is a reference to the sun. Uh, so her siblings their names reference sort of celestial, heavenly bodies, and her name is quite grounded, um, which is very apt because uh, the schism that Lloyd was mentioning that's occurring on the island is also s starting to shake, take shape within the family. Um, she's immensely proud of her people and the island and the beauty that they've created um, and the society that they've created. And she's quite frustrated with both of her brothers who have these sort of romantic ideas of the past and spend a lot of time sort of looking up. And she's very much looking down at the beauty that her people have created. So, um, yeah, I think her name is, is very appropriate. It's a beautiful Same name way. indeed. Yeah. And Markella, hi again. Hello. <laughs> you play uh, Nori, a Harfoot. Yeah. Am I saying that right? Harfoot. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't working before. Um, yes, I do. I play Harfoot. Harfoot. What, what is a Harfoot? A Harfoot, they are, they're a migratory group. They're a community. And um, they have big feet and ears. And they have a lot of heart and joy um, and stick together in the face of adversity. And they just... They're constantly looking over their shoulders, but they, they're optimists as well, despite having to be survivors. Is there anything specific that makes them special to you? I think that they don't see their vulnerability as a weakness. I think that wow. they, they're able to... I like that. ...to recognize how it can be a strength, and actually by opening up to, peop to you know, the rest of the community and to their loved ones, right. they can hopefully find a better life for themselves and, and find themselves a home. Right. And Megan, Megan, you, uh, hi, Megan. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, you play Poppy, who is uh, best friends with Nori. Yes, I do. Right. And what can we expect out of this friendship? Um, Poppy and Nori's friendship, um, they are very much the yin to each other's yang. Um, Poppy is sort of the more cautious out of the two of them, and I think it's safe to say Nori is the more adventurous of the two of them. So that already tells you quite a lot. <laughs> um, but Poppy sticks by Nori's side throughout the series. Um, and that is sort of like an ongoing theme, I think. Um, but she does that because she finds it important. She has such a love and loyalty for her friend. Um, and she finds it, you know, Markel has already mentioned the community. And in the community, they have a very specific set of rules. Mm. Um, and they're very important in order to make sure, in order to ensure everybody's safety. And Poppy really believes in those. Um, and so the reason that she follows Nori is, to, is for protection. She believes that that's the best way to protect everybody, community included. So they get up to a lot of adventure um, and a lot of mischief <laughs> Did you all, and a lot of fun. Sorry. Did you all know each other before uh, the, uh, the No, shoot? we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We met on the day. On the yeah. day. Maybe like a couple of weeks before yeah. we started filming. But it was, it was really nice because we got to sort of hang out and call it work. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, it was really nice. That's nice. They're like sisters, these two. It's amazing. <laughs> and Sarah, Sarah, you, uh, you have been a fan of the books and the films, and now you get to play the matriarch of the Brandyfoot, Harfoot family. I do, yes. Wow, what, uh, what did, uh, was that like for you? Well, it's amazing. I just suddenly realised there's three parents here with naughty children. Actually, that's a bit of a theme of today. I haven't actually done a, um, uh, interviews with the with the other parents here, so it's quite funny. Um, <laughs> um, as a fan of fantasy, it was obviously incredible. But I, I don't think you needed to be a fan of fantasy to 
uh, realised that this is an absolute dream job. I mean, uh, first of all, this incredible cast that I get to work with and that I get to now travel around the world with and come to an amazing country like India, where I haven't been before, um, <laughs> is just a joy. So, uh, lover of fantasy or not, it, it was it's been one of the best jobs of my career. Um, playing Marigold is also an absolute honour. Um, thank you to JD and Patrick. Being a, a parent to this um, beautiful actress here, Michaela Kavanagh, and a surrogate mum to Megan Richards, and having so much fun on set. Um, the Harfoots, as, as Michaela was saying, you know, they, they've been through a lot, but they have a lot of joy and laughter and love, and that's what it was like being on set. We, we just had such an incredible time working together. Um, and I'm still, I'm quite stunned that I'm sitting here <laughs> with them all now, able to talk about it to the world. It's, it's just such a privilege. Well, I have to say, the joy and the love, it shows. It's showing on all your faces. This is going to be a great one, guys. JD, to round this off, do you have anything that you want to tell our lovely audiences? And also, do my elfish ears make a cut? <laughs> like to They're wonderful. I mean, you might have to, actually have to cut them a little bit to help them make the cut, but they... they uh... <laughs> Okay. But they're close, they're close. Okay, good. Let's talk. <laughs> Have your people call my people. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> Um, well, yes. I, just, I just wanted to reiterate what a special group of people you have in front of you right now. It's been my great joy to work with them each over the course of several years now. And, and I look at them each and, and have a dozen stories that pop into my mind for every single one of the people here. And um, you're, you're just getting a small taste of it now. But each of them in some moment of the season will take your breath away. Um, they truly have some, that special something that is, is part of Middle Earth that is inside of them that they've managed to capture with these characters. Um, and the world is going to discover it very soon. And also, a few, few last things I'd, I'd love to say is that um, I take it here, many people are, are fans of, of, of Tolkien, but if you haven't ever experienced Tolkien before, uh, if you've never even worn a ring before um, and have no idea, what, or if you wandered off the street and, or if this is reaching someone who, who hasn't experienced Middle Earth, um, you don't need to know anything about uh, Tolkien to uh, enjoy this show. You can walk in off the street having never seen any of the movies, having never, never read any of the books, um, and the show will sweep you away and, and tell you all that you need to know about Middle Earth and then hopefully point you back to the books because they're really worth doing the deep, deep dive on. They're, they're books that really stay with you and get inside of you in, in a very unique and special way. Um, and uh, this is a time uh, in, in the world when, when we need a little bit of Tolkien and we all need a little bit of Middle Earth. So we hope that you're able to in, enjoy the show and uh, feel that special thing that each of these people has been such a, a, a foundational part of bringing to life these years. Um, so, so thank you very much for having us here. We really appreciate it. Amazing. I have to say this to JD, to the entire cast and crew, that this is something that I personally believed in, that cinema, in any language, anywhere in the world, the moment it is based on human emotions, basic human emotions, um, it always cuts through all. There's, there's no language needed, there's no country needed, and I feel like uh, that faith that I have uh, in the cinema that I want to do has been reaffirmed by Rings of Power. So thank you, thank you all for coming here and being a part of this press conference. We are so excited for this, and we can't wait to see the series. Thank you so much, Tamana, and thank you, Riddick. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Wasn't that a wonderful, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to pull a ring of power on you, but yeah, wasn't that a wonderful moment for all us fans of the Lord of the Rings? Let's give them a huge round of applause.